continue reading Krishna book chapter 66 by Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada the deliverance of Pandraka and the king of Kasi the story of king Pandraka is very interesting because it proves that there have always been many rascals and fools who have considered themselves god even in the presence of the supreme personality of godhead krishna there was such a foolish person his name was pandraka and he wanted to declare himself god while lord balram was absent in vrindavan this king pandraka the king of kurusha province being foolish and puffed up sent a messenger to lord krishna lord krishna is accepted as the supreme personality of godhead but king pandraka directly challenged krishna through the messenger who stated that pandraka not krishna was vasudev in the present day there are many foolish followers of such rascals similarly in pandraka's day many foolish men accepted pandraka as the supreme personality of godhead because he could not estimate his own position pandraka falsely thought himself to be lord vasudev thus the messenger declared to krishna that king pandraka the supreme personality of godhead had descended to the earth out of his causeless mercy just to deliver all distressed persons surrounded by many other foolish persons this rascal pandraka had actually concluded that he was vasudev the supreme personality of godhead this king of this kind of uh, conclusion is certainly childish when children are playing they sometimes select a king amongst themselves and the selected child may think that he is actually the king similarly many foolish persons due to ignorance select another fool as god and then the rascal actually considers himself god as if f f is as if god could be created by childish play or by the votes of man under this false impression thinking himself the supreme lord pandraka sent his messenger to dwarka to challenge the position of krishna the messenger reached the royal assembly of krishna in dwarka and conveyed the message given by his master pandraka the message contained the following statements i am the only supreme personality of godhead vasudev no man can compete with me i have descended as king pandraka taking compassion on the distressed condition souls out of my unlimited causeless mercy you have falsely taken the position of vasudev without authority but you should not propagate this false idea you must give up your position o descendant of the yadu dynasty please give up all the symbols of vasudev which you have falsely assumed and after giving up this position come and surrender to me if out of your gross impudence you do not care for my words then i challenge you to fight i am inviting you to a battle in which the decision will be settled when all the members of the royal assembly including king ugrasena heard this message sent by pandraka they laughed very loudly for a considerable time after enjoying the loud laughter of all the members of the assembly krishna replied to the messenger as follows o messenger of pandraka You may carry my message to your master you are a foolish rascal i directly call you a rascal instructions i shall never give up the symbols of vasudev especially my disc i shall use this disc to kill not only you but all your followers also i shall destroy you and your foolish associates who merely constitute a society of cheaters and the cheated O foolish king you will then have to conceal your face in disgrace and when your head is severed from your body by my disc it will be surrounded by meat eating birds like vultures hawks and eagles at that time instead of becoming my shelter as you have demanded you will be subject to the mercy of these low born birds at that time your body will be thrown into the dogs to the dogs who will eat it with a great pleasure the messenger carried the words of lord krishna to the master pandraka who patiently heard all these insults without waiting any longer lord shri krishna immediately started out on his chariot to punish the rascal pandraka the king of kurusha because at that time he was living with his friend the king of kasi krishna 
surrounded the whole city of Kasi. King Pondraka was a great warrior and as soon as he heard of Krishna's attack, he came out of the city with two Aksahuni. Aksohini, the divisions of soldiers. The king of Kasi also came out with the three Aksohini divisions. When the two kings came before Lord Krishna to oppose him, Krishna saw Pondraka face to face. For the first time, Krishna saw that Pondraka had decorated himself with the symbols of the conch shell, disc, lotus, and a club. He carried an imitation Sharanga bow and on his chest was a mock insignia of Srivatsa, his neck was decorated with a false costuba jewel, and he wore a flower garland in exact imitation of Lord Vasudeva's. He was dressed in yellow silken garments and the flag on his chariot carried the symbol of Garuda, exactly imitating Krishna's. He had a very valuable helmet on his head and his earrings like a sword fish glittered brilliantly. On the whole, however, his dress and makeup were clearly imitation. Anyone could understand that he was just like someone on a stage playing the part of Vasudo in false dress. When Lord Sri Krishna saw Panroka imitating his posture and dress, he could not check his laughter and thus he laughed with great satisfaction. The soldiers on the side of King Pondraka began to shower their weapons upon Krishna, the weapons including various kinds of tridents, clubs, poles, lances, swords, daggers and arrows came flying in waves and Krishna counteracted them. He smashed not only the weapons but also the soldiers and assistants of Pondraka. Just as during the dissolution of this universe the fire of devastation burns everything to ashes, the elephants, chariots, horses and infantry belongings belonging to the opposite party were scattered by the weapons of Krishna. Indeed, the whole battlefield became strewn with smashed chariots and the bodies of men and animals. There were fallen horses, elephants, men, ashes and camels. Although the devastated battlefield appeared like the dancing place of Lord Shiva at the time of the dissolution of the world, the warriors on the side of Krishna were very much encouraged by seeing this and they fought with great strength. At this time, Lord Krishna told Pondraka, Pondraka, you requested me to give up the symbols of Lord Vishnu, specifically my disc. Now I will give it up to you. Be careful, you falsely declare yourself Vasudeva, imitating me. Therefore, no one is a greater fool than you. From this statement of Krishna's, it is clear that any rascal who advertises himself as God is the greatest fool in human society. Krishna continued, Now, Pondraka, I shall force you to give up this false representation. You wanted me to surrender unto you. Now this is your opportunity. We shall now fight. And if I am defeated and you are victorious, I shall certainly surrender unto you. In this way, after chastising Pondraka very severely, Krishna smashed Pondraka's chariot to pieces by shooting an arrow. Then with the help of his disc, he separated Pondraka's head from his body, just as Indra shaves off the peaks of mountains by striking them with his thunderbolt. Similarly, Krishna also killed the king of Kasi with his arrows. Lord Krishna is specifically arranged to throw the head of the king of Kasi into the city of Kasi itself so that his relatives and family members could see it. Krishna did this just as a hurricane carries a lotus petal here and there. Lord Krishna killed Pondraka and his friend Kasiraj on the battlefield and then he returned to his capital city Dwarka. When Lord Krishna returned to the city of Dwarka, all the Siddhas from the heavenly planets were singing with glories. As far as Pondraka was concerned, somehow or the other, he always thought of Lord Vasudev by falsely dressing himself in imitation of the Lord. Therefore, Pondraka achieved Sarupya, one of the five kinds of liberation, and was thus promoted to the Vaikuntha planets where the devotees have the same bodily features as Vishnu, with four hands holding the four symbols factually. His meditation was concentrated on the Vishnu form, but because his, he thought himself Lord Vishnu, it was offensive by his being killed by Krishna. However, that offense was mitigated, thus he was given Sarupya liberation and he attained the same form as the Lord.
When the head of the king of Kasi was thrown through the city gate, people gathered and were astonished to see that wonderful thing. When they found out that there were earrings on it, they could understand that it was someone's head. They conjectured, conjectured. As to whose head it might be, some thought it was Krishna's head because Krishna was the enemy of Kasi Raj and they calculated that the king of Kasi might have thrown Krishna's head into the city so that the people might take pleasure in the enemies having been killed. But they finally detected that the head was not Krishna's but that of Kasi Raj's himself. When this was ascertained, the queens of the king of Kasi immediately approached and began to lament at the death of their husband, our dear Lord. They cried, Upon your death we have become just like dead bodies. The king of Kasi had a son whose name was Sudakshina. After observing the ritualistic funeral ceremonies, he took a vow that since Krishna was the enemy of his father, he would kill Krishna and in this way liquidate his debt to his father. Therefore, accompanied by a learned priest qualified to help him, he began to worship Mahadev, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, who is also known as Vishwanath, is the lord of the king of Kasi. The temple of Lord Vishwanath is still existing in Varanasi. And many thousands of pilgrims is still gathered daily in the temple by the worship of Sudakshina. Lord Shiva was very much pleased and he wanted to give a benediction to his devotees. Sudakshina's purpose was to kill Krishna and therefore he prayed for a specific power by which to kill him. Lord Shiva advised that Sudakshina, assisted by the Brahmanas, execute the ritualistic ceremony for killing one's enemy. This ceremony is also mentioned in some of the tantras. Lord Shiva informed Sudakshina that if such a black ritualistic ceremony will perform properly, then the evil spirit named Dakshinagni would appear and then carry out any order given to him. He would have to be employed, however, to kill someone other than a qualified Brahmana. If all these conditions were met, then Dak Dakshinagni come accompanied by Lord Shiva's ghastly, ghostly companions would fulfill the desire of Sudakshini to kill his enemy. When Sudakshina was encouraged by Lord Shiva in that way, he was sure that he would be able to kill Krishna. With a determined vow of austerity, he began to execute the black art of chanting mantras assisted by the priests. After this, out of the fire came a great demoniac form whose hair, beard and moustache were exactly the color of a hot copper. This form was very big and fierce. As the demon arose from the fire, cinders of fire emanated from the sockets of his eyes. The giant fiery demon appeared still more fierce due to the movements of his eyebrows. He exhibited long, sharp teeth and sticking out his long tongue, licked up upper and lower lips. He was naked and he carried a big trident. Blazing like fire after peering from the fire of sacrifice, he stood wielding the trident in his hand, instigated by Sudakshina. The demon proceeded toward the capital city, Dwaraka, with many hundreds of ghostly companions, and it appeared that he was going to burn all outer spaces. Space to ashes, the surface of the earth trembled because of his striking steps. When he entered the city of Dwarka, all the residents panicked, just like animals in the forest fire. At that time, Krishna was playing chess in the Royal Assembly Council Hall. All the residents of Dwarka approached and addressed him, Dear Lord of the Three Worlds, a great fiery demon is ready to burn the whole city of Dwarka. Please save us. In this way, all the inhabitants of Dwarka appealed to Lord Krishna for protection from the fiery demon who had just appeared in Dwarka to devastate the whole city. Lord Krishna, who specifically protects his devotees, saw that the whole population of Dwarka was most perturbed by the presence of the great fiery demon. He immediately smiled and assured them, Don't worry, I shall give you all protection. 
The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is all-pervading, He is within everyone's heart and He is also without in the form of the cosmic manifestation. He could understand that the fiery demon was a creation of Lord Shiva and in order to vanquish the demon, He took His Sudarshana Chakra and ordered Him to take the necessary steps. The Sudarshana Chakra appeared with the effulgence of millions of suns, His heat being as powerful as the fire created at the end of the cosmic manifestation. Manifestation. By his effulgence, the Sudarshana Chakra illuminated the entire universe on the surface of the earth as well as in outer space. Then the Sudarshana Chakra began to freeze the fiery demon created by Lord Shiva. In this way, the fiery demon was checked by the Sudarshana Chakra of Lord Krishna and being defeated in his attempt to devastate the city of Dwarka, he returned back. Having failed to set fire to Dwarka, the fiery demon went back to Varanasi, the kingdom of Kasiraja. As a result of his return, all the priests who had helped instruct the black art of mantras along with their employer Sudakshina were all burned to ashes by the glaring effulgence of the fiery demon. According to the methods of black art mantras instructed in the tantras, if the mantra fails to kill the enemy, then because it must kill someone, it kills the original creator. Sudakshina was the originator and the priests assisted him. Therefore, all of them were burned to ashes. This is the way of the demons. The demons create something to kill God, but by the same weapon, the demons themselves are killed. Following just behind the fiery demon, the Sudarsana Chakra also entered Varanasi. The city had been very opulent and great for a very long time. Even now, the city of Varanasi is opulent and famous, and it is one of the important cities of India. There were then many big palaces, assembly houses, marketplaces, and gates, with large and very important monuments by the places, by the palaces and gates. Lecturing platforms could be found at each and every crossroads. There were buildings that housed the treasury, elephants, horses, chariots and grain, and places for distribution of food. The city of Varanasi had been filled with all these material opulences for a very long time. But because the king of Kasi and his son Sudakshina were against Lord Krishna, the Vishnu Chakra, Sudarshana Chakra, the disc weapon of Lord Krishna devastated the whole city by burning all these important places. This exertion was more ravaging than modern bombing. The Sudarsana Chakra, having thus finished his duty, came back to his, to his Lord, Sri Krishna at Dwarka. This narration of the devastation of Varanasi by Krishna's disc weapon, the Sudarsana Chakra, is transcendental and auspicious. Anyone who narrates or hears this story with faith and attention will be released from all reactions to sinful activities. This is the assurance of Sukadeva Goswami who narrated this story to Parikshit Maharaj. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 66th chapter of Krishna, the deliverance of Pondraka and the king of Kasi.